Researchers at UCSD and Clemson University have discovered that specially synthesized Y-shaped carbon nanotubes can behave as transistors, and they report their findings in the August 2005 issue of Nature Materials. The finding is considered significant because these nanotubes are much smaller than conventional transistors. So this is the first time ever that we know of that uh, a transistor-like structure has been fabricated using a carbon nanotube-based element. Right, so the way we start is that we have here the, the carbon um, Y junction uh, in this uh, bag, envelope, and it comes directly from uh, Clemson University. And there's a lot of them right there. So you need to kind of put them in solution and separate them out so that then they can float down and when you drop them, drop them down on the chip, you can see them better. It's really small. It's probably about the, the whole area is about the millimeter square, but the, the contacts are about the micron space apart with each other. So it's really small. Since it's really small, I need a microscope, so I stick them in a, a FEM, a scanning electron microscope, and look around, and once I found one, I use a focus ion beam machine to focus a really, really narrow beam of electrons and ions, so that we can deposit platinum ions on the exact spot nearby the Y junction, so that we can draw the contact, just like drawing lines on a CAD program. So uh, this catalyst particle uh, that is mostly composed of iron uh, is uh, actually plays the role of modulating the current flow between uh, one branch to the next. So uh, we again we apply a voltage on the stem. Uh, this is charged, and then we charge different excitants depending on the size of the particle. And this charge will modulate the current flow between the two branches. And now let me do a field effect transistor. Uh, if, well, you can think of this as a source and this is a drain. So the current is going from the source to the drain. Right. So uh, in one state, it is flowing. So let's say, uh, we'll take it as a one state. And, and in another state, when this particle is fully charged, the current is not flowing anymore. So we'll take it as a zero state. So it's a one in the zero state. And that's the foundation of, uh, well, that's the binary logic. And uh, this is important because, uh, in, in some sense, it kind of extends the paradigm of nanotechnology beyond just making things small. It also involves using some inherent functionality that can be fabricated, uh, that can be uh, synthesized at the nanoscale. Material scientist Sung Ho Jin, who participated in the study, also is investigating other properties of specially synthesized carbon nanotubes. For example, Jin and his colleagues are experimenting with using nanotubes as sources of electrons in lithography. They are also exploring the use of nanotubes in flat panel displays and as nanoscale catalyst particles, fuel cell electrodes, and electronic circuit interconnections. They are also using nanotubes as nanoprobes in atomic force microscopy to help image individual atoms or defects in semiconductors.